Here we are at Stonehenge. This is the actual Stonehenge, very old, where they drag these massive rocks from somewhere. When you look around, there's really nowhere to get them. But somehow, they brought them here at a time when there were no tools, only very primitive tools, and they were able to stack them according to some astronomical uh, significance. And this is me proving that I'm actually at Stonehenge. At Stonehenge. <laughs> now I have another problem, which is a little daughter that wants me to pick her up, little girl. So I need to be her horsey because she is tired. And uh, I wanted to make... I have a spider on me apparently. And I wanted to make this video quickly before I have to pick her up. So one more time. Here is Stonehenge in all its present day glory. I'm going to walk around a bit to see it from different perspectives, but this is one perspective. And here's another perspective of Stonehenge. Let's zoom in. And there's lots of birds on the stones. They don't seem to understand. This is a historical landmark. They're not supposed to be pooing on these stones. But who's going to explain it to them? And let's do a panoramic view of the entire area around us. So there are no mountains. There's nothing nearby from where these stones could have been pulled. They must have come a far, a long distance to bring them and then stack them. And that's the mystery of Stonehenge. No one ever knows. I was told that Stonehenge was purchased by someone. They owned this as a gift for their wife. Now, stones like these aren't that impressive for the ladies, I think. So it was then donated to Britain for safekeeping and now it's a tourist attraction. Interesting story. As I mentioned, I had a problem. Well, here's the solution. My daughter, seven-year-old Daenerys, mother of dragons, is tired. And so I have to be her horsey. All right, onwards and upwards. <laughs> Stones are arranged so that the midwinter sunset is right this way. So you can see the arrow points. So where I'm standing is where the midwinter sunset happens. That was the point of these stones. They were arranged so that they are astronomically significant for things like sunsets, sunrises, stellar constellations, looking at the stars in the night sky. And there's a big rock that's just standing on its own here at the edge of Stonehenge. Not sure why that is. Maybe it creates a shadow as the sun sets. And now we're at the back side of Stonehenge. There's a few smaller rocks you can see in the field there. And lots of birds. Okay. And Stonehenge, if I do another panoramic view, is in the middle of a big grass field. Very flat grass field. And yeah, that's the famous rocks. And this is the not so famous George with the famous rocks. <laughs> Maybe some of the fame will rub off on me. Maybe not. <laughs> with Daenerys. Hi, Daenerys. She bought a cute hat. All right. This is George at Stonehenge. We are in Bath, the city of Bath, not what you do when you are dirty take a bath. This is the park where we just got dropped off and we're going to explore the city for an hour before we have to hop back on the bus. So let's have a look at this lovely Georgian architecture and that's our bus and they have a lemonade stand here. They sell traditional lemonade. Ice cold. <laughs> Three pounds. And yeah, let's go have a look at the city of Bath. Here's an impressive church. Very large, grand, with a guitarist in the center square.
The rest of the buildings don't look that impressive, but that one is a sight. And we're getting a new tune. So the church is quite tall. You can see that window. Jumbo glass. And yeah, I'm a tiny little guy compared to this structure. It's impressive. This is the circus in Bath because it's circular. It's not an actual circus where you have performers and clowns and acrobats, but it's a circular living space, which you can see clearly right here. Now in the, in the middle, there's this beautiful, picturesque, tall tree, three trees actually, and all around are these apartments. Townhouses, I mean, they each have a door, so I imagine they're townhouses. And there's door one, door two, and so on. It's pretty good. Now the architect is John Wood Sr. And Jr. <laughs> so I guess father and son. Most of the constructions here are built by him. 1754 to 1769. Quite old. Let's continue beautiful park in Bath, the city of Bath, with surrounding townhouses in a circle. It's a very unique architecture, just one massive row on a semicircle of housing. Panoramic view of what you see behind me. Would you like to live in one of these one long row of housing in a semicircle. I kind of feel there's very little privacy and it's kind of like too much. There's no gaps between any of those houses. So it's not for me, but I'm sure many people did live here and still do. Yes, different walks of life, different preferences. And there are my, there is my family. And yeah, we prefer bigger open spaces. That's why we love Dubai, <laughs> where we live. I've lived here for six years and counting in Dubai on the Palm Jumeirah. Lots of space there and uh, none of this like so crowded uh, housing like this. But uh, this has its charm for sure. We do not get this level of green in Dubai. Certainly the parks and all the trees is special uh, and common in London but you know it's very special to us because we live in a desert <laughs> let's keep going standard English town nestled among nature with brick two-story uh, very steep roof construction with some modern cars contrasting the traditional homes with the obligatory church in the center of the town right here. So this is traditional English lifestyle. Mixed with some modern tech and telephone cables. And we had a bug on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a good experience and a heavy bag to carry it with me. And let's see what else we can find in this town. Now then, if you want to know where the leaky cauldron pub is, in a place called the Leatherall Market in London, it's now an optician. Always was an optician. In fact, actually, I went out my eyes tested there the other day. You will never guess who I bumped into. Everybody. It's a funny joke. This is the side view of the church. 
They call it an abbey here in England. With a nice little house across the parking lot. And here is my family. <laughs> Alright, that's the end of our bus tour of Stonehenge, Bath, and this little town where there was a George Inn where we had our dinner. Alright, let's go back to the bus.